I got done streaming all of Wuthering Waves 1.2 and I have my official dedicated full thoughts on 1.2 coming in a full video, probably some point tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. It will have spoilers if you didn't play 1.2 and Zheja's story as well, which Oh boy. Now, if this is your first time here, consider taking a moment here, subscribing to the channel, hitting that little bell notification. That way you remain up to date with every single thing that I post and I post every single day. Do not miss out. Let me preface this entire video by stating, I enjoy Wuthering Waves. I know there are millions of people out there that very thoroughly enjoy Wuthering Waves. 1.0 wasn't that great. 1.1 was a stark improvement over 1.0. 1.2, was considered by many to be a filler patch. Yet, everyone I've talked to, hundreds of people, the thousands of people that stopped by over the course of the nine or 10 hours I was streaming 1.2, everyone across social media, they all share the same sentiment. While a filler patch, this felt very different to a filler patch. This patch in specific significantly exceeded player expectation. Nobody foresaw 1.2 would be as good as 1.2 ultimately ended up being, which is crazy. Not only were there substantial improvements to performance, not only were the characters really fleshed out, the voice acting so much better. I mean, did, did you hear Yang Yang, even female Rover spoke faster and with more feeling, but everything about it was beautiful. It was such a different feel. There was a, a completely different approach to storytelling altogether. This game, my God, like they are absolutely killing it, guys. Everything about this chapter, everything about the last two chapters have proven that Kudo completely understand their player base and know exactly what we want. And then they also had Yinlin during a little puppet show. Oh my God, Neverness, whoeverness has some big news. Recently, they posted on their official Billy Billy video page. And interestingly enough, I don't know why they didn't make a public announcement concerning this, but they confirmed that not only on Billy Billy, but also on the Chinese version of TapTap was pre-registration open. This was posted three days ago. Now, up until this point, pre-registration has been open and available on their website, both in China and globally. But as of the last roughly month or so, and this was reported over on Reddit as well, in China alone, Neverness to Everness has accumulated 1.4 million pre-registrations. This is on Billy Billy and TapTap. Tap. This disregards the website, this disregards anything outside of those two specific sources. Now, 1.4 million pre-registrations over the course of a month really isn't that much. Many other games have gotten several million over the course of a month, but many of those other games are also incorporating every single platform combined. I'm assuming if you factor in the official website, you're probably gonna come in at several million. This is interesting because for whatever reason, they chose to omit the global and the Chinese websites. They omitted every single external Chinese or global source other than Billy Billy and TapTap. I honestly, I feel like Neverness is going to be a very fun game. I think that it looks very good so far. I like the character models. I think they, they do need improvement, but at the same time, I know we still have to go through a beta test phase. So there's probably gonna be like at the very least a year worth of testing that we need to go through before the game is actually ready. So alterations are gonna be made to the characters. Alterations are gonna be made to the animations. Alterations are gonna be made to the graphics overall. I really think that the studio that is doing it this time, or at least the subdivision of the studio that are doing it this time are much more competent than the Tower Fantasy developers. This is after all done by the Tower Fantasy developers, for those of you that were unaware. I think that after the conversations I've had with some of the developers, the staff that are actually creating the game, they seem very passionate about the game and they seem like they at least know what they're doing to an extent, which is good because this could very easily turn into Tower of Fantasy 2.0 and that is definitely not what we want. I want this game to succeed. I want Azure Premier League to succeed. I want Unending Dawn to succeed. I want every single gotcha game to succeed. The reason, well, actually, no, I'm, I'm glad 
that uh, Devil May Cry Peak of Combat and One Punch Man World are flopping as hard as they are. But I want the majority of gacha games to succeed, especially the big open world ones. The reason for that is because the more they succeed, the more games I have to regular co regularly cover, and the more games I have to regularly cover, the more videos I get to push out, the more my channel grows, the less I stagnate, and that that's just a big win for me. I genuinely hope for the best for this, and I am more than happy to continue to provide feedback and potentially get access to test phases so I can provide feedback and maybe showcase different things to you guys so you guys can provide feedback to me and then I can relay it to them to hopefully help the game not miss its mark. 1.4 million pre-registered players though across Billy Billy and Tap Tap China are a milestone that they should be proud of. Now, before we talk about any other games, let me take a moment to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon and my YouTube channel members who allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are phenomenal, and I can't thank you all enough for the support. Let's keep talking. Cat Fantasy is a game that is launching on August 21st. That's four days from as of recording this video, three days as of when this video goes live. This is a game that I need to make you guys aware of because it has already achieved 1 million pre-registered players. And I know in the grand scheme of things, when compared to like Wuthering Waves, which had like 35 million, Zenless, which had over 40 million, and all the other big open world gacha games that are all gonna have probably like 15, 20, 30 million pre-registered players as well. 1 million for the kind of game that this is, is a fantastic number. This is not a triple a budget gacha this is not an open world gacha this is not a gacha that is comparable to the big ones nevertheless this is a very interesting neko girl inspired game where you deal with a lot of cat girls and you know if you're into pussy then this game right here is probably right up your alley i'll be streaming this when it goes live and probably enjoying it this is supposedly launching onto mobile and pc which means in theory there should be a PC client coming and available. And given it launches in just a few days, if you're interested in playing it, pre-register right now. Get those goodies while you can. One of them, if I recall, is a cute cat girl. What are you waiting for? Artery Gear has officially end of service or will be ending service on November 12th, 2024, which is incredibly sad to hear. I played this game when it launched. I played this game for like two weeks straight. I did several videos on this. I've at points documented how it's doing and like I enjoyed it. I did. I know it wasn't the most free to play friendly game. I know it wasn't the highest quality game. But at the same time, just something about this game, I don't know, like it appealed to me for a little while. You know what I mean? It just, I am, it is sad to see this one go to, you know, suffer in the way it has and not achieve the potential success it could have achieved. I genuinely think this game could have been a lot of fun if it were handled better. Just like Brave 9, which is also end of servicing in December, the very next month. But what Brave 9 is allowing you to do is actually play the game offline. I love when gacha games do this. I do. When gacha games present you with an offline version of their game that you can play forever, indefinitely, with no new updates, mind you, then that shows that they care. It shows that they've put the extra effort in to create a version of the game for you to keep forever. So you can play the game while it's a live service game and you are being serviced regularly with updates and new characters. And then when the game finally ends, you can continue rerunning the story, rerunning the missions and keep all of your characters forever. Just like you would a single player game, an offline game, like an RPG, like God of War, like Tales of Symphonia. Right, you have the game forever. You can play it forever because you own it. That is essentially what they're doing here. And I genuinely think that is a fantastic reward for players that have supported them and continued playing over however many years this game has been available for. And that is it. That is everything I wanted to talk about today. Now, if none of this is of any interest to you though, absolutely no problem. I got you covered two different videos on screen right now that might be more up your alley.